Acute Laryngotracheobronchitis Definition Acute laryngotracheobronchitis is characterized by sudden inflammation affecting the larynx and the lower respiratory tract, with the primary focus on the subglottic region, trachea, and the tracheobronchial tree. Etiology Prevalence Commonly observed in children aged below 5 years. Causative agents Frequently linked with mixivirus, parainfluenza virus type 1. Influenza virus types A and B are also occasionally contributors. There is a potential for secondary bacterial invasion involving pathogens like Haemophilus influenza, pneumococcus, and hemolytic streptococci. Pathology This condition can result in life-threatening respiratory obstruction owing to subglottic edema and the formation of crust. Mechanically, obstruction arises from Narrowed subglottis. Mucosal edema causes constriction in the subglottic area. Edema and swelling of conus elasticus. The conus elasticus swells and becomes edematous. Mucosal edema and tracheobronchial tree. Edema extends to involve the tracheobronchial tree. Additionally, there is an obstructive accumulation of secretions due to intensive inflammatory reactions. Pathogenesis Infection can cause submucosal edema, causing mechanical obstruction in subglottis or mechanical and secretional obstruction, tracheobronchial tree. Mechanical obstruction in subglottis manifests as inspiratory strider, and simultaneously, Mechanical and secretional obstruction manifest as a prolonged inspiratory phase with wheezing. Both scenarios cause air hunger, hypoxia, and restlessness, further causing cyanosis, hypercapnia, and acidosis, leading to stuporous, quiet, glazed facial expression. Hypercapnia and acidosis lead to reduced air entry and cough reflex, resulting in respiratory failure. Clinical Features Symptoms Typically affects pediatric patients, ranging from infants, more than 3 months, to children, up to 3 years old. The condition initially presents as an upper respiratory tract infection. Symptoms manifest abruptly and progress swiftly. Affected children become restless and often refuse to consume food. Patients often exhibit signs of anxiety. Signs Notable fever, accompanied by a toxic appearance and an elevated pulse rate. The cry may exhibit weakness. A distinct seal's bark cough, <coughs> particularly pronounced at night. Inspiratory by Phasic Strider Inhalation or biphasic strider is a common manifestation. Incidence of strider is lower than in acute epiglottitis. In severe cases, strider intensifies, accompanied by supraclavicular retractions. Respiratory distress. Severe infections can lead to air hunger, hypoxia, and cyanosis, indicative of compromised respiratory function. Investigations. X-ray neck anteroposterior view, characterized by the presence of the steeple sign. X-ray neck, lateral view, soft tissue exposure, reveals subglottic constriction. X-ray, chest, pneumonic patches might be observable. Flexible laryngobronchoscopy should be conducted cautiously. Subglottic edema can be identified. Crusting within the tracheobronchial tree may be observed. Treatment Hospitalization and initial measures Hospitalization is often necessary due to escalating breathing difficulties. Any handling of the patient must be done cautiously to avoid triggering acute respiratory distress. Administer inhalation anesthesia and oxygen to the patient. Establish an intravenous line and then proceed with laryngoscopy for diagnosis. Collect laryngeal swabs for culture and sensitivity test. Intubation might be required for airway management. Most patients show recovery within 48 hours with antibiotic treatment, steroids, and intubation. 
Antibiotics Ampicillin, given at a dose of 50 mg per kilogram per day in divided doses, is effective against secondary infections caused by gram-positive coxy and haemophilus influenza. Humidification Humidification aids in softening crust and thick secretions that obstruct the tracheobronchial tree. Fluids Administer parenteral fluids to combat dehydration. Steroids Steroids, such as hydrocortisone, 100 mg intravenously, may help alleviate edema. Adrenaline Administered via a respirator, racemic adrenaline acts as a bronchodilator, potentially relieving dyspnea and averting the need for tracheostomy. Airway Management Intubation or tracheostomy may be required if respiratory obstruction persists despite other measures. Tracheostomy is considered if intubation extends beyond 72 hours. Assisted ventilation might become necessary for certain cases. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.